Welcome to the Living the Dream Podcast with Curveball. If you believe, you can achieve. achieve, achieve. Welcome to the Living the Dream with Curveball Podcast, a show where I interview guests that teach, motivate, and inspire. Today, I am joined by author Beth Polino Dutzik. Beth has a book out there. She's from Alabama. You know, she lives with her husband. She's enjoying life. And her book is going to be talking about the music scene. So we're going to get into that and, and find out what she actually in the music business and everything that she's got going on. So Beth, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Curtis, so much. I really appreciate it. Why don't you start off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, um, I am living in Alabama, but I am a New York girl born in New York City and raised in New York City uh, or Westchester. And um, as a New Yorker, I felt um, I, I was the luckiest person to be able to grow up in such a great city. And that helped me um, get involved in music. I mean, concerts and just hooking up with the right people to enjoy the music scene. So um, that's one thing. Um, I do have three daughters um, who I love dearly. And that was the reason why, you know, the book, in my head or books it is a series of five books i will say that and it goes over a 20 year period and i'm working to get book 2 out hopefully in august so i'll have two books out of the five out um books 3 and 4 are already written um but i'm spending time marketing Book one and finishing, um, looking over the final manuscript for book two so we can get that to print. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I do have a little miniature dachshund, um, Truffle, so you might hear her <laughs> somewhere along the line. Okay, well, we were discussing this in, in the uh, green room. Were you actually in the music business? I was, um, it, it started so innocently. I started dating somebody from my neighborhood and he was a roadie for um, the primo band on the band circuit, which in New York was very lively. Um, there was a band that came out of um, that club scene, but, the club scene and you're talking about the New York area. So that was, you know, New York, which is, you know, Long Island, Westchester, um, also Connecticut and New Jersey are involved in that. And so I landed with friends who were the, the hottest ticket on, on, on the scene. And from that, um, I met, uh, a boyfriend who um, I was with for several years um, who was in another band. And so you extrapolate that out and you start to meet so many other bands and, and people. And so you are in it. You, you are in that rock and roll club scene and everybody is trying to get a record deal. And there was, there was a, band who everybody will know that did come out of it. Um, and there, there were a lot of really great musicians. I mean, phenomenal. And unfortunately those people did not get record deals. And it was back in the day when somebody came to look at you and see if they wanted to do a demo. And it's so different now. And in my books, I actually run through the changes in the music scene um, where it was the A&R guys coming to see you, liking you, let's do a demo or somebody who had money and said, we're going to get you studio time. 
And I saw bands, um, you know, swap out people um, for some, for other people. And then when they do that, they they actually change the band, right? You you get rid of a bass player and a guitarist, and you've now changed the band. It's not the original band. So that went on um, a lot. <laughs> and it was sad to, to see that kind of, I don't want to say cutthroat, but for lack of better words, you know, yeah, that, that, that went on. I also um, had a friend whose um, brother was, um, he was in a band in London and, uh, you know, that didn't happen. And, but he did write a very famous song and, um, Joan Jett actually sang it, and um, I Love Rock and Roll, and I knew the song, and I was in the supermarket with my daughters, and I'm into this song, and I'm like, why do I know this song? And it wasn't because of Joan Jett, and I realized it was my friend's brother um, who wrote that song, so that was pretty funny, and you know, we, I met somebody who was, um, a publicist promoter for, uh, at the time, a big record label. So, you know, you get backstage to concerts and there's parties and, you know, you, you, you just involved in it in different levels and you meet, um, people in bands, some people who you're like, oh my God, I, I can't wait to meet them. And, they're not who they who you thought they were. Um, and then there are some that are just like really fun. So um, I guess for me, it was always wanted to sing, but just never felt I was good enough to do it. So I never did. And to have these books in my head for so long, it's now I'm putting myself out there as branding me and my books and I am Curtis working on my voice, which um, there are certain bands that I can um, actually sing pretty well to. So um, who knows? I, I might become um, the uh, female lead character for a while and maybe put out some reels of me singing. I don't know. But I did write songs in all of the books. I have written songs. So if there's any bands out there who uh, want to work with me, I'm happy to listen to you. Well, tell us about the book and e e e the book series and why you decided to write it. Um, I, I had the image in my head, as I said, for 25 years. And the best way for me to describe it to you is there would be um flashes and I, I kind of knew where the books were going but it was like grayscale and I would get bits of how the book was going to be laid out and originally the book was a little bit darker and all of a sudden um and I don't know if it's because um here in Alabama in in my nice beautiful development we have a book club and uh I, I was reading all these romance books and I said, you know what? I have a great story and um, I need to put it out there. And I was literally in the shower and all of a sudden the book went through me like a faucet with the names and, and everything. And it is a romance book. It is about, um, two people who fall in love and they are in different bands and they eventually create a power band and it's them playing the circuit and them um, trying to get a record deal. I don't want to ruin the first people, but it, it's it's their love story and journey and navigating um, the music business as a couple, as a band, and 
it runs through 20 years and it is about their love story. And it's also about how you navigate and what happens to your love affair when there's so many different things. And I bring um, the gritty side of the music business in. Um, it's also a little naughty. I will say that. So um, you can't write about a love story and not have a little bit of uh, spiciness. And so the, uh, I'm done with the four books. And the first one is out. The second one will be out in August. And, and then, you know, the third one's ready, the fourth one. And I do have a fifth one. And in my head, it's already mapped out. I know how it's going to go. And... and I haven't stopped writing. It, it It's just been um, a wonderful flow and unfolding the characters. And um, I start to unfold their lives. Um, and there's many different players. So um, you see the evolution of people that go from, you know, club scene and the bars and the, beer on the floor and, you know, the, the raunchiness to the music business and, and how, how that affects you. So that's what the books are about. Okay. Well talk about the perfection saga. Well, the perfection saga is, as I said, five books. Um, the first one is playing hard and, the reason it's called playing hard is that you to get to where you need to be, you have to play hard. You have to deal with again, playing in, in clubs and hoping that some record company is going to look at you. And the most important thing in, in, in that type of situation is to have original music and not just be a, a cover band. Because there are a lot of people who were great cover bands. And if you don't have the original music, you're you're not going to go anywhere. Well, so what I they, meant by talk about it is, is uh, how did you come up with it? That name, um, that's how a did pretty I come cool up with name. The name. Yeah, that's a pretty cool name. Okay. So originally, um, I thought I was writing one book. And I am self-published. And um, I have... Um, a great team of five ladies and the name of the book originally, they said it sounds like a self book. So when we decided that book one was actually two books, um, everybody, the collective minds got together. And because it's a series, we knew that we were going to be using for me, it was always the perfection saga. Perfection is the name of the band so it is their saga. It's their story. Um, and then we came up with um, the books would all be playing something. The first one's playing hard. The second one is playing high. And um, you definitely need to get into that. That's the gritty, you know, side of the music business because that happens. And I do have the names for the other two books, but I'm not going to reveal them yet. Um, but that's when we came up with the series that everything would be playing something. So, um, and we encapsulated it by calling all books, the perfection saga, because it perfection's the name of the band. Okay, well, speaking of bands, tell us who were some of your favorite bands in the 70s and who are some of your favorite bands now? Um, oh, gosh. Um, in the 70s, you, I, was, I was into the progressive rock. So it was like Pink Floyd, and, and you can't leave out Led Zeppelin. They were, they were great. Um, early Genesis. Um, Jethro Tull. Uh, there were there were a lot of those progressive bands um, that I loved, and I did like 
um, other music. Um, now um, I have, and I still do love that music. And I raised my children, and and so the rocker girl in me never left. So I raised my children and indoctrinating them first in the Beatles and the Stones and, you know, Van Halen. And I just, I, I, I was gradually teaching them, you know, the police. I, I'm just thinking of came to mind. And then we got into the. Uh, the grunge era is um, something for me that still lives on. You know, you have Pearl Jam and Nirvana and Soundgarden with Chris Cornell. And I did love grunge. And um, actually, the first concert I took my daughters to at Madison Square Garden was Corn and Puddle of Mud. And people kind of looked at me like, that that's the first concert you took your daughters to. And it's like, yeah, because we were all into it. Red hot chili peppers. I mean, I, they're coming to mind now. What I'm listening to is I will say, uh, no, no, no debate about it. And, you know, I know how some people feel, but, uh, Nickelback is my favorite band now. Um, and they always were, and so I am still um, heavily a fan of them. And there's bands like Seether and uh, Theory of a Dead Man. And they, I, I guess you could call them light metal. Um, and then, of course, there's Metallica. So I'm leaning now more towards that type of music. Um, and their great Shinedown is another great band. Their, their music writing is... Um, I think phenomenal. Okay, everybody, it's Michael E. Cullen II. And I'm Sesame Encarta from the All Too Real, Real 2 podcast. We're passionate about movies, TV, and pretty much all things pop culture. Dive into the chaos of failed sitcoms, direct-to-video sequels, and the quirky realms of cinema and TV. Join us every Thursday for your dose of All Too Real 2 entertainment. We'll guide you through debates like whether Howard the Duck qualifies as a superhero. Ponder if Larry the Cable Guy could be the new rock or Schwarzenegger. Discover if some shows and movies should have stayed in the cutting room. Ever heard of a sitcom featuring that dictator with the funny mustache? Well, we watched it. We're dedicated to unraveling the peculiarities of pop culture, sometimes with awesome guests. So, if you're into the eccentric world of pop culture, listen and subscribe to All Too Real 2. Available wherever you find podcasts and on Age of Radio. So if you were going to make your book, book series a movie, who would mm. you want to play Gina and Trevor? Okay. Well, um, and I have thought about that because uh, my team said, you know, when we get this going, you might be um, approached. And I said, because as a self I own everything. So that's important to say that I own everything. So if somebody came to me and wanted to do this, I don't think it would be a movie. I think it would be a limited series because it's um, a very intricate story. So you couldn't do it in two hours. You would have to make it um, a limited series, two seasons. So when I um, sound egotistic, but the only person who could play Gina because I have put a lot of me in the character of Gina. So who could play her? Me. That's the only person who could play me, uh, who could play Gina. Because the nuances she has, a, a lot of me is in her. And a lot of the, a lot of the things that, that happen actually happen to me. So I have put some personal stories or, or personal um, parts of the character, me. So as far as Trevor, I mean, 
I can think of a few people, but I don't want to name them because I don't, I, I, at this point, I, I wouldn't want to ruin it because I would love to get them to play that character. So I don't want to say it out loud, but I have thought of, people like Gina's mother. I I have a person in mind and she um, starts a band with her cousin and um, I have a person, you know, so yes, I have thought about the characters and who would play them without a doubt. The only one that I feel comfortable telling you is Gina because it would be me. Um, and my daughters are like, mom, are you, are you crazy? And it's like, well, you know, mom would probably have to get some face work done. And, you know, with, with AI and CG, they, they can make you look younger. And then I will get to a point where, you know, I can look south. Um, so yeah, um, I, I have thought about it and I have actually thought of people to play certain parts, but I don't want to ruin it because if I say it out loud, um, I don't want to jinx it. So um, I do have people who would play certain parts. Doubt. I, I've thought about it, Curtis. Okay. Well, tell us about your dad. Um, my dad. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I can say this honestly. Um, I am an Italian, well, Italian Jewish girl, but which in New York is very common. Um, I didn't come from Long Island. I came from Westchester. Not a big deal. Um, all my family uh, lived in Long Island. So there's a certain way that, you know, as an Italian girl, you, you the profanity that was in my house was unbelievable. And um, we did not live in a wealthy estate like Gina does. But um, and I can say this because my father is gone for 10 years. But my father was a wise guy. My father was that guy. And so being the only girl and the oldest, um, there were certain things that my father would um you know, uh, how can I say it? I, I guess I always knew that my father did something other than have that normal life. And he was protective. And, uh, but he was certainly a, a wise guy back in the day. Um, and for a long time. And, and it's a different way of um, growing up. Uh, I always knew that if, if anybody, and it actually did happen, um, if anybody um, tried to get over on me or, or do anything, I knew that I was protected. <laughs> and there was no way I wasn't going to be protected. My father would take care of anybody who crossed me. Yeah. So, um, my father, yeah, my father was, my father was, great but there was that side to him so tell us about any upcoming projects besides your your, your book series that you're working on that people need to know about uh well i am doing a lot of marketing for book one um we ran a promotion on amazon there's another promotion that's happening in july and we are doing another promotion in August where we're going to hit some important parts of what is now like publishing, like book talk and things like that. Um, and when, because when you're self published, you don't have um, a publishing house promoting you, which is good for me because, as I said, I own everything. And the people who I work with are sort of like sub subcontractors, but I am, and this was a big uh, coup for me. I am doing four book festivals um, starting in September. And the first one is in Brooklyn, which is a big deal. 
and one of my daughters lives in Brooklyn. So um, I'm excited about that. I also submitted my book for, um, I don't know if it's a, a literary award or acknowledgement, but I did submit my book. And then I am going to Nashville. And that's a two-day book festival. And then I'm going to Portland, Oregon, where I also submitted my book for some kind of literary award. And the last one I'm going to, which, um, you know, all the people that are working for me and my I call her my marketing guru said, I can't believe you got into Austin and Austin is huge. So I am going to be doing four book festivals and I will be there. I will be selling my book. I will be signing it. Um, and I hopefully by then I will have two books out. So that's even better when you do a series to get two books out, like the two books sell each other and then people wait for the third one. And I believe that I'm not going to wait a long time. I'm going to try to get them out every three or four months so that, um, the books all end in a cliffhanger. So um, you're going to want, after book one, you're going to want book two. At book two, you're going to want book three. And and it goes like that. So those are the things I'm doing. Um, I, I love doing podcasts. I, I think they're, they're great. I love meeting people as yourself and, and talking about the book, talking about myself. Um, because when you're a writer, you um, you're branding yourself because people want to know who you are. And a lot of authors don't want to do that. Um, this is what I've heard. And I'm exactly the opposite. I want to do everything I can. Well, throw out your contact info so people can keep up with everything that you're up to. Yeah, if you go to um, perfectionsaga.com, that's my website. Um, I'm on Facebook and I have um, two profiles. I have my author page, but my um, my regular Facebook page has been made um, a professional. So I had to scrub all my family off of it because they're like, we don't want to be on your Facebook page. Please take us off. So I did. Um, I'm on Instagram, I'm on threads, I'm on X, I, I'm on TikTok, and I do do, um, I was doing reels every day, but now that my marketing person is involved, we decided that I would do two reels um, a week. And I talk about me, I talk about what's going on with the book, I talk about, hey, you know, guess what? This band is touring. And if you like them, you should go and see them, uh, that kind of thing. So um, I will be doing a reel later today. Okay, close us out with some final thoughts. Maybe if that was something I forgot to touch on that you would like to talk about or just any final thoughts you have for the listeners. Um, well, I do you want to talk about the songs that I... Um, that I, um, there are certain songs that um, are very special to me as um, somebody who went through 9 11. Yeah, and, go ahead. Um, it, wa it was horrible. I was working at IBM at the time, and you know, everything was going crazy. And I remember going down to the cafeteria with one of my friends. And we saw the plane hit the second tower and we fell, literally fell on the ground. And then the phone started going crazy. And my daughters uh, were calling me because they were in junior high, high school and they let them go. And they're like, mom, what's going on? I said, just go home. And then um, because the elementary school was right next door, they tried to get my youngest daughter and the school was the elementary school was in lockdown because there were a lot of um, first responders like firemen and policemen that um, were probably called. So they didn't want the younger children to know anything. 
and uh, there was a woman I worked with and her husband was um, big in one of um, the Yonkers, which is a big city. I mean, Yonkers borders the Bronx. And she said, go home, get your kids because they're going to start closing roads, which they did. Um, and I went home, I picked up my daughter and she was like in the fourth grade and she, and you know, no matter how they try to talk about them not knowing, the first thing she said to me was, mom, did the Twin Towers fall? And I told her the truth and we went home and, uh, you know, you rewatch it and it, and the jet fighters were going over my house and I could see smoke um, because I lived close to um, the Hudson River. And after all that, Alicia Keys came out with um, Empire State of Mind. And for me, that is a, a song, even the version with Jay-Z is good, but um, it's a little bit uh, harder. But Alicia Keys' Empire State of Mind made us New Yorkers feel so bonded together um, because it was a crisis and you didn't know anywhere you went could something happen. And that song just made us feel like, you know what, we're going to get through this because we are New Yorkers. And I loved her for that. And it became a song like at Yankee Stadium. They were used to play the Frank Sinatra, New York, New York. And then they switched to Alicia Keys singing Empire State of Mind. And I that to me is a very profound song. Um, and, you know, as a New Yorker, I just love it. Now, living in Alabama, um, I have to say, Sweet Home Alabama is, you go to the football games here and it's played. And you know, Curtis, that football is big down south. And it's, you know, we're Alabama. So um, they play Sweet Home Alabama. And it makes you feel, it makes you feel proud to live here. It's, um, you know, it's a beautiful place and people, I guess, don't understand how beautiful it is. And it is the cradle of the civil rights movement. And that is something um, that I look at and I remember the history. And it's like, look how far we came and embrace the fact that this is where it started. And it's a wonderful thing. All right. There you have it. Miss Beth, um, please be sure to pick up her book and, you know, check her out. And, and hopefully she gets that movie and gets a chance to to play Gina. Yes. Make yes. Sure you and you you will love the people who I have in mind. I oh. think you will, Curtis. Oh, I'm sure we will. And I would also love listeners, if you would follow, rate, review, share this episode to as many people as possible. Yes. Get Beth, get Beth's book. And if you have any guests or suggestion topics, Curtis Jackson, 1978 at att.net. Jump on your favorite podcast app. Give us a review. Follow us. And thank you for listening and supporting the show. And Beth, thank you for joining us and sharing your story. Thank you. And um, I will be happy to come back. And if you um, send me the link, I will put this on. Um, I will promote you on my web page. Absolutely. We'll do it. Yeah. For more information on the Living the Dream podcast, visit www.djcurveball.com. Until next time, stay focused on living the dream.